According to the New York Times, women across the country are running for office in unprecedented numbers. And Emily's List, a national organization whose mission is to help women win elected office, says that during the two year of the 2016 election cycle, it was contacted by 920 women about running for office, a record at the time, while 30,000 women have approached it since the 2016 election. Yet despite these growing numbers of actual and potential women candidates elsewhere, here in New York City, women currently hold only 11 of 51 city council seats, a 39 percent decrease from 2009 when there were 18 women on the council. Now a New York City initiative called 21 in 21 is hoping to change that by electing 21 women to the city council in 2021. And joining us now to talk about that initiative are its co-founders, former city council speaker Melissa Mark Viverito and former New York City Council member Elizabeth Crowley. Welcome both of you to the program. Welcome Thank you. back to you. Thank you. Been here many times. <laughs> what are the factors that are leading to this growing number of women interested in running for office across the country? I mean, look, I think clearly um, the cycle leading up to the presidential election, uh, when we saw the comments made by the president, misogynistic comments, uh, grabbing women, uh, you know, and then seeing that level of just disdain and uh, lack of real seriousness that's been to women disrespect uh, was being put on full display. And that was an affront to many of us. And mm -hmm. it's very personal to mm -hmm. many of us who have either experienced sexual assault or, uh, you know, any, any type of harassment. And so that, I think, is a response when we saw the Women's March that came out of that, that, that day of the inauguration or the leading up to the inauguration. And when we saw the record numbers that you just cited of mm. women that are asking to run or considering mm. to run. And we're seeing that here at the local level too. So we need to see ourselves reflected in government. Mm. We need to mm -hmm. see our issues and the things that we care about uh, being represented around the decision-making mm -hmm. table. And we're talking about legislation and budgets and, and priorities. Uh, the voice of women and our experiences needs to be there. And, uh, you know, that's why Elizabeth right. and I decided to, to do this initiative. But you say it's happening here also, but the numbers, at least in the city council, don't seem to reflect that. Why are the numbers of elected city council member, women city council members, why is that falling? Yeah, we are the most progressive city, at least we like to right. think that, and we should have an equal number. An equal number would be like 25 or 26 council members. We've never had that number, but we have over 52% of the population that are women. I mean, the city council has a huge budget. It's $86 billion. Um, there's over 130 different city agencies or offices with nearly 300,000 employees. Mm. Like, Women need to be at the table yeah. in a fair, equal number. Yeah. And uh, there are a number of different variables as to why women are not in give the us, seats. Give us some examples, because, well, I, I mean, it, it surprises well, me. Well, we felt, look, I think it, it, clearly it's not a priority for people, right? We have institutions. For people, what people you think? I think what we have, you know, we all have to take responsibility, but mm. there are institutions in this city that play a role in the electoral process and have not made the issue of gender a priority. And mm. I think that, you know, we were raising the alarm when I came became speaker. I could see the trend going down. Mm -hmm. I started approaching some of the unions, some of the county leaders, and said, listen, you know, we have to, be active and engaged to get women mm. elected and to be candidates mm. to run for these positions. Uh, and when all else you know, is equal, uh, mm. gender needs to be, be an issue here, right? Okay. So that, that's, I think, a responsibility that we need to put it in focus, okay. which we're seeing people being mm. put in focus and people are raising the alarm and being as concerned as we were. Right. So Council Member Crowley, where does 21 and 21 come in? <laughs> Okay. What, what are, what are uh, his strategies? So uh, the year 21 is about three years away. It gives women opportunity to prepare now, to start thinking of themselves as leaders. Um, you know, men are groomed differently, you know, and many <laughs> who've run for office have a sense of entitlement. And maybe they are ready and experienced and good candidates, but there are plenty of women out there that are good candidates too, except they don't think of themselves in that way. Mm -hmm. And they often need to be told, hey, you're mm -hmm. doing this in your community, you're a leader. So, so give us one example 
of what 21 in 21 is doing that is going to help the situation. So we've, you know, we've kicked off the initiative so people know it's here. We have women, young women, that are signing up to become members of these organization. We're also doing trainings so that we can start giving young women now, early, you know, and, and women in general, an idea of what it takes to run, right? When you talk about fundraising, setting up a campaign, a message, and starting to see if, if, what leadership emerges out of that and for women to yeah. decide for themselves if this is a path So basically you're preparing women to run in yes. three years. And the good every, thing is, but you're not you're not giving the money and well, we would help them in terms yeah. of raising money. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you know the the 21 and 21 describes itself as nonpartisan. Does that mean that you would help Republican candidates as well? This is about women expressing a decision to run and to represent their districts. Yeah. And so in that way, whoever steps up, we're willing to give them the tools and to make the decision for themselves and to run a campaign. And the, the electors, you know, the, the, the constituents have to decide if that's the right candidate. So we have less than 30 seconds left for women watching right now who are considering running for office. What words do you have? That they, they should definitely do it. I mean, <laughs> you know, they should think about it and that there's there's venues and opportunities for them to meet uh, and expand their network and learn yeah. of, of groups like in 21 and 21, Emily's List and others that will help provide them with the tools um, to make that reality happen. But we need more women in office. And mm -hmm. if you're thinking about it, that you should definitely explore it. Uh, and you can always reach out to 21 and 21 yeah. and see if we can be helpful. You know, go on our website, sign up to become a member, uh, follow us on Twitter, Instagram. We're doing things every single month. And uh, if you feel it within yourself that you are determined to do this, then you can and you will. All right. Well, thank you thank both you. so much for joining us Very today. Much. Talking about 21 in 21. Great.